With the recent release of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and Ant-Man Quantumania trailers, there is nothing more exciting than a trailer from Marvel. Setting the tone, creating the hype, and then building the speculation of what the story could be. But sometimes those trailers show us a little more than they should, and we end up getting moments that they probably shouldn't have spoiled for us in the trailer. So today on Infinity Rewatch, we are talking all about all the moments that Marvel should not have spoiled in their MCU trailers. <laughs> Starting with Captain America, the first Avenger. Love this trailer, period piece where Captain America we get to learn the origin story and everything. And you know, one of the things is we know, we know we're getting Red Skull. It's gonna happen, right? Am I right? It's gonna happen, we're getting Red Skull. Now the thing is, we don't know what he's gonna look like on film. So we have ideas, we know, but we don't wanna see the reveal. In fact, it would have been more surprising to see him still wear the mask and let us think that we're not getting the Red Skull right away. The Avengers movie, like almost every great superhero movie, has what's called the money shot. And the money shot in this case is finally getting to see all six Avengers standing together in New York while Alan Silvestri music plays around them. We all have a great time. We cry, we pee, it's fantastic. But guess what? They showed us that in the trailer. And it's such a strange thing to show because yes, you want to advertise that this is the movie where all these characters come together, but really, I think everybody knew that. And there's ways to do that without giving away the money shot. I wish we hadn't known in advance. Speaking of Avengers assembling, we get Age of Ultron, okay? Now this was a hype trailer. This was really cool because they really set like a creepy tone for Ultron. And we all know how terrifying this guy can actually be in the comics. So this, the hype was there. The hype was there, the tone was there, the story building was there. But why? Why on this comic book universe would you reveal that the Hulkbuster is coming? They put it in the photos, the promos, behind the scenes, and even they put it in the trailer. Why? Why? That is something we would have not predicted that would have been a reveal. And imagine, imagine what people would have been talking about after that movie. Crazy. Crazy. All right. This is a big one. It's it's so big. It needs two of us. That's how big it is. Absolutely. This is this is probably the biggest the biggest trailer with the biggest news that movie would have had. The biggest surprise that this movie would have had. I can't even begin to uh, under oh. we're just gonna go like this. Under Hey everyone. With a whip. Like why? Why would you do it? Why would you put Spider-Man in the trailer? Captain America Civil War, you were already jam-packed to the gills, to the Star Spangled gills, with so many characters, we were already excited. This was like the WrestleMania of superheroes. I don't even watch wrestling and I understand what he's talking about because that's how excited we were. We were getting so many characters. We were getting basically Avengers 2.5. Yeah. To show us that Spider-Man was coming too. You didn't need to. Honestly, could, could we take, you know, and, and Marvel's all about the multiverse. Can we imagine a multiverse where they didn't put him in the trailer and then people came out of the theaters with that knowledge that Spider-Man was in the movie? Oh my god! In fact, I don't want to spoil anything, but apparently the whole plot of the Kang Dynasty is Kang is looking for that multiverse because he too wants to share that experience. <laughs> it's true, but shame! Hulk likes to smash things. We all know that. Hulk also disappeared into outer space. We all know that too. But we can put two and two together if Hulk just happens to pop up in Ragnarok. We know how he got there and probably why he's there. But that would have been such a beautiful surprise. Yes, I know him. He's a friend from work is a really funny line. But guess what? It would have been funnier if we hadn't already heard it a bunch of times. Thor, Ragnarok, your Thor Hulk fight is sweet and green and other colors, but I wish you hadn't told us in advance. All right, so Infinity War, the epic conclusion to this amazing saga, the infinite saga 
Uh, and let me let me just start off by saying, uh, you know, there are so many characters in this movie, and the story is going to be epic. So they didn't need to do much to really hype the story. In fact, there's some really good trailers that set the tone of like that they're closing the story, and it's going to be an epic battle, and it's going to be a war of infinite proportions. Um, see what is there? I did something. I uh, saw. You saw. All right. So. Now, one of the big things is we see in the trailer that Thor runs into the Guardians. Who the hell are you guys? So, first of all, last we left Thor, Thanos came and he like, you know, we know that he's probably not going to survive this. Then, we see in the trailer that he clearly not only survives it, but he meets the Guardians. And this is where I kind of have to agree with Chris Pat Pratt during promos before Infinity War, that like, you know what? Take as much time as you need to explore the, the cosmos of Marvel. The, the second that the Guardians meet the Avengers, you're gonna bring the two worlds closer together. And, and yet one world is not as explored as the other. So why? Why did you show that moment? Moments, Thor. Guardians. Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. First of all, great title. Love the title. Second of all, great movie with lots of cool set pieces and a lot of fun stuff happening. One of those fun stuffs that did indeed happen was we got a crazy cameo from Wong and Abomination fighting in a Kumite style cage match, God knows where. Thank you. And that would have been a delightful surprise, especially considering Wong and Abomination don't really play a huge role in that movie. It is literally just a cameo they are there for giggles. So why they decided to show us that cameo in the trailer and make it seem more important than it ended up being, that was an odd choice to me. The fact that we knew it was coming ahead of time kind of soured the whole thing, especially because it was just a fun cameo at the end of the day and not a plot point. I really wish that had been like Bloodsport 4, the dark Kumite, where nobody actually knew what was happening. All right, next up, we have Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Now, I know, I know, it may not be loved by pretty much everybody, but I loved it. I actually did enjoy it. Rewatching it again and again, it is a fun action thrill ride. It depends what you go in for with this. Speaking of what you go in for with this, we love. I love Zemo. Civil War, Zemo is a great villain. And actually, they really set some good story building blocks with him. I can't wait to see what more he's going to do. And the fact that the reusing of villains is a pretty big deal. Now, what really upset me in this trailer and what they revealed was, in the promo run, they did talk about during, uh, you know, the cons that, you know, Zemo's back and they show him in a prison. But the trailer comes out and the first thing they show, or one of the first things they show was Zemo back in the shot is him holding his purple mask, purple mask. His signature look was revealed. Now imagine that you didn't know that going into this show, and then you get to see him in his full regalia. And not only that, him mentioning all these points, like yes, I'm a baron, all these wonderful things. And so seeing the mask kind of already set me up of, you know, giving me everything I need without even need, needing to see the show. And that's kind of disappointing. Ryan, I've got some shocking news for you. Shock away. Illuminati confirmed. Oh, uh, yeah. They're real. They're real. They're real. But we knew it was coming. Yes. <laughs> How did we know it was coming? Are we psychic? I would well, know, but they had a psychic in it. And they should have saw it coming. <laughs> Actually, so what we're talking about is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Now, I gotta say, this to me was like the Empire Strikes Back of sequels for Doctor Strange. Like, it's they elevated it, the action was amazing. But, and Kevin Feige even admitted that the, the team that made that trailer went too far. You went too far and you revealed way, way too much. Not only do we know that the Illuminati is going to be in this movie, but that Professor Xavier, Mr. Sir Pats, Sir Pats himself, I, I was gonna say Mr., but Sir Pats himself is in the trailer talking. We should tell him the truth. And he did his best, as most actors do, which is deny everything until it happens. <laughs> but we know the voice, and you show the shoulder of Professor Xavier himself. 
That was a big one for me. Of all the people that we met on that Illuminati stage, he was the one that spoke to me the most. It's Professor X, it's 90s Professor X with the yellow, like it's everything we want, and the theme even happens. But to see that spoiled ahead of time was just like, it, it dampened everything else because all those other people who came after him, they're great, mm -hmm. but they're not Professor X from the 1990s cartoon. So you kind of not only spoiled a big gun, you spoiled, in my opinion, the biggest gun in that room. Absolutely, and there were some big surprises. I mean, they still had Black Bolt come out, and of course, Mr. Fantastic, but still, we knew the Illuminati was coming, and then everyone started speculating which members would be there, and you show your biggest gun out of all of them. We have a better idea for what you can do for the trailer for Doctor Strange 3. Okay. But we don't want to spoil it for the fans. Uh, so. That was good. That was All right. Good. It's okay. Feige will tell it to you the way Professor X usually does. Mm -hmm. You think he's listening? Well, he's listening. Uh -oh. I'm, I'm accidentally listening to the people next door and they are having fun. <laughs> All right. So there you have it. Those are the trailers that we chose that I think spoil quite a bit in a movie. I think that sums it up nicely there and so you know stay tuned we got plenty more content coming on infinity rewatch if you haven't been checking out our live streams along with our podcast make sure you check out our content it's on there on the youtube channel it's on digital charcuterie and then on top of that we have uh the podcast which you can check out that's right you can listen to the podcast on the rebel scum podcast network on apple on spotify on the other ones whose names i always forget but if they are a platform for audio entertainment you're going to find us there. Mm -hmm. You can't get rid of us. We're there. We're not going anymore. So we'll see you next time, and we'll see you when the next trailer hits. And until then, please have a marvelous day. Oh, wait. Yeah, I should say it psychically. <laughs>